Hi, my name is Rick Bloodworth and you're watching the Common Sense Christian Channel. Today we're going to talk about something that I'm convinced truly has the ability to not only change your life, but to change your eternity. Now the reason I can say that is because it's not anything for me. It's not some kind of a wisdom that I possess or some kind of a secret knowledge that I have. Instead, it's something that we all have, and that's the Word of God. It's, this is going to be an encouragement to read the Word of God, maybe in a way that you haven't before. Uh, my wife and I both were raised in Christian homes, and we were both sent to, to uh, Christian colleges. We went to the worship and Bible classes just about every time the doors were open. When we were growing up, we took all sorts of Bible classes at college, and yet neither one of us were really that particularly good of Bible students. And the reason was because we really hadn't learned the habit yet of reading the Bible on a regular basis. Uh, until I was probably in my early 20s, I just picked up the Bible and read it kind of like you'd read a magazine. If there was something that interested me or something that I had an assignment in, I'd turn over to that and I'd read it. But I really never read through the entire Bible, at least not in a systematic way to where I could really be paying attention to what I was reading and, and really be trying to, to uh, get some knowledge that would actually help me. It was just uh, something that I did. Well, uh, not too long after Carolyn and I were married, we had a gospel meeting in Casper, Wyoming, and a preacher came, uh, and this gospel meeting was just outstanding, and one of the encouragements he had in that gospel meeting in his lessons that he would go through was to read your Bible, and not just to read your Bible, but to read your Bible every day. I still remember he got up at the beginning of one lesson, and, and he asked the question, have you read your Bible today? And then he said, I hope you have. I enjoyed the book of Ruth today. Well, that took me back on several uh, counts. One, I hadn't probably read my Bible that day, except for what I'd read in church that evening. Uh, but the other was the idea of just reading and enjoying what you're reading. I'd always kind of looked at the Bible as, mm, I'm, I don't know if this is the right way to put it, but something that was more of an unpleasant assignment something that I knew I needed to be doing, but I really didn't enjoy it. Um, it's kind of like yeah, taking your vitamins. You knew you needed it for your health, but it wasn't something you actually looked forward to. Um, but I started looking at the Bible a little bit differently that night, and it was shortly after that uh, that uh, my work started slowing down a little bit, or at least I didn't have any in one day, and my parents, whose office I shared, uh, were gone on a business trip. And so I had a Bible at the office and I just picked it up and I opened it and it opened up to the book of Zephaniah. And I remember that because I started reading that day in Zephaniah and I never quit. I mean, I quit that day, but I, but I, I didn't allow any days to go by without some sort of a, a daily Bible reading. As a matter of fact, I was determined at that point and committed at that point to begin to read through the Bible. For too many years, I had just accepted what people told me that God said, or what people told me that God's Word meant, or what this passage uh, really revealed. And so I was really at the mercy of other people. They were good people, don't get me wrong. They were my parents who loved me. Uh, they were some pretty good preachers that I'd run across, and some very good Bible uh, class teachers at college. Uh, and so there, there were people who, I'm convinced, were sincere, many of whom loved me and weren't trying to fool me in any way, but I was still at their mercy as far as knowing what God wanted from me. And I was determined not to let that happen ever again. So with that day, beginning that day, I started reading through my Bible. I can remember at the early stages of that where I was trying to become a daily Bible reader and I might wake up shortly after I'd gone to bed remembering I didn't read my Bible today and I'd turn the light on and I'd read a passage or, two, or a verse or two and then I'd turn the light off again. And you might be wondering, well that probably didn't uh, do a whole lot of good, did it? And, and your answer is no, it didn't do a whole lot of good as far as getting Bible knowledge in that by that particular method, but what it did do was it formed a habit within me. I didn't want to go a day without reading the Bible. Now I've got other habits in my life where I don't go a day without doing things. There's uh, I like to eat, and so I don't go a day without 
without eating. As a matter of fact, I've rarely gone in my life uh, a meal uh, uh, or by skipping a meal. I, I eat regularly. I need it uh, not only for my health, uh, but I enjoy it. And so, uh, so I do it every day. I breathe every day without exception. Uh, drink water every day without exception. And so there are things that we can see that we do every day, but none of which are as important as God's Word and coming into contact with that Word on a daily basis. And so, I don't know about, I think I was uh, 50 years old when I started the Common Sense Christian website. If you go to commonsensechristian.com, you can go back and see all sorts of of old articles in there, but about seven years ago, maybe eight, I came across the idea of a, of a Bible challenge. It was at a time when everybody was taking a 30-day Bible challenge for this or that, they'd, or they'd have a an ice bucket challenge where they'd dump a bucket of cold ice water over their head to, to show their support for some cause, or you'd have uh, 30 days to get your finances in order, or 30 days to get rock-hard abs. Well. I'm not sure that I ever got my finances completely in order, and I know I've never had rock-hard abs, nor do I care to even try. But something like reading the Bible and finding out what God has to say really appealed to me. And not being uh, subject to other people's opinion of what His Word had to say uh, contained even more appeal to me. And so as I started reading and finding out for myself that this was something that was very beneficial, I decided maybe that there, there could be a way where we could encourage other people to do so. And so the 30-day Bible challenge was born. Uh, we, uh, my wife is a graphic uh, designer. She's an artist who's worked for every, everybody from uh, current uh, to Hobby Lobby and has done a lot of, of things on her own. Uh, but but uh, she designed just a little bookmark, and, and this bookmark has 30 slots for it, 30 days. Uh, and the idea behind the 30-day Bible challenge is this, to read through the New Testament in 30 days. We started with the New Testament because this is the Testament that we're under. We're under the Christian dispensation. The Old Testament has some great things within it, and we'll talk about reading that later. But start with the New Testament, especially if you're not sure whether you're saved or not. You need to be reading from the Word of God and the Gospels and the New Testament to find out what God has to say about these things. So the, the method for this 30-day Bible challenge really is, is surprisingly simple. It's just to read seven chapters from the New Testament every day for the first week, and then the second week is eight chapters a day, and then the ninth week, or the third week is nine chapters a day, the fourth week is ten chapters a day, well that's 28 days, and the last two days you read 11 chapters. Now it seems like it's getting progressively harder, but it's actually not, because the Gospels are have a little bit longer chapters than the end of the, old, of the New Testament does, and so you'll find you're reading about the same amount of material every day. If you're a fast reader, uh, this reading will take you probably about 20 minutes a day. If you're a slower reader or if you take more time over it like I do sometimes, it may take you twice that long. But my encouragement to you is this. Just do it. It's worth it. And if you can read through the Bible, uh, you might miss a day or two, but, but if you do, just, just skip that day and come back the next day. You can make it a 32-day Bible challenge or a 34-day Bible challenge. But, but make sure you're doing your best to, to get through and to, and to read through the New Testament. If you'll do that, and, and using this method, you'll do it in 30 days, you'll have an overview of the New Testament, perhaps like you've never had before, because you've read it all in, in one month. And, and so all the information you started reading in Matthew is still pretty fresh with you by the time you get to the 22nd chapter of Revelation. And so, so this, this is a, one method to really become uh, acquainted with the Bible, and especially if you're not overly acquainted with it in the first place. I know we have sent out over 100,000 of these little bookmarks. Uh, over 400 uh, churches uh, have taken the 30-day challenge and have encouraged their members to do that. Um, I, I, it's something that, that the leaders of those churches felt was really important to have a, a church 
that was knowledgeable in the Bible. One of the reasons is it's so easy to be misled. A lot of times we see leaderships within a, within a church that have a certain, maybe let's say a predisposed bias about one thing or the other. And, and so a lot of times uh, being part of that group will get that bias as well. We need to read through the Bible on our own and, and do so in a way where we're really trying to find out what God's Word is for us. Well, if you've taken the 30-day challenge, uh, we have something else called the 90-day commitment. And it is simply uh, an effort to now study through the New Testament, not in 30 days, but in 90 days. There's 260 chapters in the New Testament, and so most of those 90 days, you'll be studying three chapters a day. There will be 10 days you're just studying two chapters a day. But what are you studying for? And, and here, is, here is an answer that I hope will appeal to you. You're going to be studying whatever you want. Uh, I'm interested in salvation, uh, especially when I first started reading the Bible. I wanted to make sure that what people were telling me about salvation was actually what God had to say about salvation. So when I did this 90-day uh, commitment, one of my uh, main study uh, uh, topics was salvation. And as I would go through the New Testament, I would write down the whole verse uh, every time I came across a passage that talked about salvation. And so by the end of that 90 days, as far as I could tell, I had every verse written down that said, this is what saves you. And, and uh, there are other studies that I've done as well, studies on faith and on grace and on love, on, on the commandments of God. There's a whole topic of, of being in Christ and the blessings that we receive in Christ and how you uh, get into Christ in the first place. And so that was a study I've done. Um, you study whatever you want, but I would really encourage you the first time through to make sure that at least one of those topics is salvation. Uh, this, little, uh, this little guide that we have uh, just has a, a few quick suggestions on it. And, and again, it just has some example categories is what you might want to study. Grace, salvation, obedience, love, faith, in Christ, into Christ. There's a whole lot of other topics you might be interested in. But, but pick a handful. Pick, pick two or three and, and get you a notebook and divide that notebook in, into those two or three categories. And then as you're studying through each day, the first day, Matthew 1 through 3, Write down every verse you find that talks about the topic you're looking at. Some days you won't have anything recorded. As a matter of fact, there will be a lot of days you won't have anything recorded on a specific topic. And then you might come upon uh, a day where you're writing down verse after verse after verse on that topic. What it's going to do is it's going to turn you into a Bible student. And it's also going to show you something else. It's going to show you that the Bible is something we can understand. Far too many people look at the Bible as if it's magical, as if knowledge somehow is only for the select few, maybe for somebody who has a title of priest or preacher or pastor or whatever, but we know that can't be true. We look at different preachers and pastors and priests and we see that they don't all agree with what the Bible says. Sometimes we'll use that as an excuse not to study the Bible in the first place. I would caution you against that. Your soul depends upon your correctly handling the word of truth, and you can do it. Uh, if you looked at one of the earlier videos, then, then you might remember this example. Uh, one of the excuses people use for not studying the Bible is that nobody can really understand it, that 10 different people can look at the same passage of Scripture and come up with 10 different ideas as to what that passage of Scripture might mean. And that's true. It's possible. It's also possible to take the same math problem, 10 different students looking at the exact same math problem, and coming up with 10 different answers. But only one of them can be right at the most. There is a right way, and it is, a, it is absolutely revealed by God. And this isn't a capricious God whom we serve. We serve a loving God, the creator of the universe, the God who loved us so much that he gave his son on the cross to die for our sins. Why would he allow his son to die for our sins and then make the way to his son and the way back to him tricky or, or so difficult we couldn't understand it? That doesn't even make any sense. 
So I'm convinced that by reading through the Word and studying through it, we are going to be able to come into contact with the real knowledge that God has for us. And we're going to find out what God wants us to do. The last uh, uh, study that we have put together is a 30-day Old Testament challenge. Now, it's not reading through the whole Old Testament in 30 days. The Old Testament's about four times as long as the New Testament. And so it's split up into four different sections. The first are the books of Moses, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The next is uh, called, for lack of a better thing, the Champions and the Kings. Uh, it starts with the book of Joshua and goes through Second Chronicles. And then we have the books of wisdom and the return from the exile. And that starts with Ezra uh, and ends with the Song of Solomon. And then the fourth challenge are the prophets of God. And that starts with Isaiah uh, and ends with Malachi. Each one of them uh, are broken down into 30-day challenges. And you may again uh, miss a day or two, make it into a 35-day challenge if you need to. But by all means, read it. Find out what God has for you. One of the things you will discover, as I have discovered through the years, is this very pleasant truth, and that is we can understand the Bible. We can know what God wants us to do. We can know what He requires for salvation. We can know what He requires for our coming back to Him when we've sinned. And we can know principles that are contained only within the Scripture that will give us a better life and someday a better eternity. Well, this 30-day challenge, again, uh, though it, it certainly is a method, is not the only method. Find a method that you can use, that you'll stick to, that will allow you to read through and study the Bible. I'm convinced if we do this that we'll not only become better uh, with our knowledge of God's Word, but we'll become better servants of God. And we'll also become better citizens. <laughs> Doesn't this country, this world need better citizens? Uh, what better citizen than one who has learned the truths of loving their neighbor as themselves and all the other wonderful things that we are encouraged to do uh, and commanded to do by God in order to live a better life? Well, that's the plan. Uh, if you'd like to look at it a little bit more, you can go to the Common Sense Christian Facebook page or the 30 Day Bible Challenge Facebook page, and you'll see these materials there. As a matter of fact, if you want to get some, you can request them on those pages. You can do so in a very private way, uh, and there's never a cost for this. We're, we're not going to charge you to send you these materials. As a matter of fact, I'm not ever going to be asking you for money. So if you, if you see some comment uh, below that's asking for money, it's not me. Um, we don't need your money and we don't want your money. But what we do want to do, hopefully you and I, is help each other out on the path to heaven. One of the very best ways we can start is by becoming acquainted with God's Word, finding out what He wants us to do, and then because we love Him, doing it with all of our heart. That's all for today. I hope this will help. Uh, if you have any comments, please put them in the section below. I'm always interested to see the comments. It also helps to uh, get this channel to more people. Uh, and so if you have any comments, please share them with me. I'd love to hear them. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that, if you find it helpful. And encourage others to do that if you think it might be helpful to them. But for today, that's all. Let me stop with this thought. Have you read your Bible today? I hope you have. We'll see you next time. Appreciate your tuning in. I pray that God will richly bless your efforts.